In this video, I'm going to go over a couple of major AMA CPT panel changes <clears throat> that they that they released recently in terms of technical corrections that may impact on how you code in your ENM services. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona at Sunrise Urology, also your humble host of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. I've been absent recently due to a family member who has taken ill, uh, but I am uh, gonna try to produce as much content that is valuable to you as much as I can, and um, this is one of them. So the AMA CPT panel released a, a technical update, and you can find it on the AMA's website, and I'll try to link it in the video description. Basically clarifying a couple of, uh, well, several misconceptions or misunderstandings by urologists and other physicians and, and qualified health professionals who use ENM coding rules. A couple of major ones that I'm going to go over today. All right, number one, we are, <laughs> some of us have been confused regarding this services reported separately. All right, so this is coming directly from the AMA. It says that the ordering and actual performance and or interpretation of diagnostic test studies during a patient encounter are not included in determining the, the levels of ENM services when the professional interpretation of these tests or studies is reported separately by the physician or other qualified healthcare professional reporting the ENM service. Long sentence, I know, but we, we've known about that, that line. But here's the important sentence tests that do not require separate interpretation for example tests that are results only and are analyzed as part of medical decision making do not count as an independent interpretation but may be counted as ordered or reviewed for selecting an enm level i know long sentence confusing jargon but this is how it breaks down for CPTs or services or studies, tests that you run that have a professional component, a modifier 26 component, such as U, uh, uh, Euroflow, uh, Eurodynamics, those tests, you should not be counting that in medical decision making if you are providing that service, if you're billing for that service. But the services that do not have the professional component, for example, your analyses, post for residual CPT 51798, or PSA, testosterone, these tests or studies are results only. That means there's no independent interpretation, but you can, when you order it, you can count that as ordered or reviewed even when your practice bills for the UA, PVR, PSA, testosterone, because these are results-only studies. So let me say this again. When you order a UA, PVR, et cetera, tests that are results-only, that don't have a modifier 26 component, you, can't, you can now count that as part of your medical decision-making when you're trying to come up with an ENM level. So you can count that as ordered or reviewed. So it does count, it, it does help you in establishing the, the, uh, the level of service when it comes to, in this case, it will be data, right? In the data element of medical decision-making. So that is something new that they clarified that, so that anything that has a modifier 26 component to it, and if you order that, and you interpret it, and you bill for it, and you report it separately, you cannot count that as part of your medical decision making. However, your analyses, PVR, testosterone, PSA, these tests are results only, and they don't have a modifier 26 component to it. When you order that test, even though your entity or your practice, or you, if you're the owner of the practice, even if you bill for it and you report it separately, you can count that as part of your medical decision making. So that is something new that you may want to pay attention to 
And if you don't believe me, just read the, the AMA's CPT panel, recent technical corrections and updates, and you'll see, yes, the language is confusing, but it's there, okay? So that is, uh, that is something new that you wanna pay attention to that will help you and reach perhaps a higher ENM level in your data section. So you can now count those data elements. Something else that I've said before, and now the AMA has clarified, and we're talking about surgeries. And specifically, we're talking about minor or major elective emergent surgery, blah, blah, blah. So surgery, minor or major, this is verbatim from the CPT panel. The classification of surgery into minor or major is based on the common meaning of such terms when used by trained clinicians, similar to the use of the term risk. These terms are not defined by a surgical package classification, meaning, let me translate that to you, for you. Vasectomies, 90-day global. Hydroselectomies, 90-day global. For the average patient, these are not major surgeries, despite the 90-day classification of the surgical package. So you have to use common sense, right? Vasectomies, hydroselectomies, even though they have a 90-day global, some people are arguing, oh, that's a major surgery because it's, it has a 90-day global. The AMA has now come out to clarify that, nope, use your common sense. Those are not major surgeries despite the 90-day global, and so now they have made this uh, absolutely clear in writing that you don't want to um, use the uh, CPT package classification as, as a way to classify whether a procedure is major or minor. So for us, cystectomies are major surgeries, prostatectomies, nephrectomies, partial nephrectomies, those are major surgeries. And then the risk is relative, right? Vasectomy is not a major surgery. Hydroselectomy for the typical patient is not a major surgery. It's common sense. So I, I understand that you, you may want to try to game the system by using the 90-day as major surgery, but hopefully AMA has now come out to clarify the situation and that there's no confusion, all right? Any comments or questions? If you uh, agree, disagree, leave them below. Hello, Erica. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for ta tagging uh, the uh, members of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. The technical uh, updates are kind of dry, and I have written down some notes. When I have time, I will go, go through all that and highlight the changes so that uh, we can all benefit from from knowing these uh, up rules updates, some of which are beneficial to us as coders, billers, and qualified health professionals using the ENM rule. Please leave them below. Have a good day. Bye-bye.